welcome to the live stream. Uh, I think Aaron's viewers uh, came over. Some of uh, folks came over from Aaron's live stream, which was in this same spot. And uh, that's because outside it is completely covered in snow right now. Actually, it's it's getting less and less covered in snow. And now it's more of a um, like road grime slushy texture going on outside. Uh, but... Normally, Aaron's stream happens before mine and happens at the studio, uh, like, not close to here. And I stream from inside of our apartment in this little bit. Uh, but we decided not to have Aaron uh, travel unnecessarily. Uh, the past, like, two days, this has been just two days of this, and uh, we've been on TriMet, uh, which has been great. And the TriMet drivers are troopers, despite... The snow, the max was down, despite the fact that they have an operator shortage, you know. Um, but hello, welcome. Welcome to uh, the 16th or 17th, I actually haven't figured it out yet, uh, birthday of my channel. Uh, so, you know, this is the most important birthday to celebrate today, obviously, is youtube.com slash anomalily. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it is also uh, a holiday for a lot of people. It's the last night of Hanukkah. Uh, it is Christmas Day. Um, or oh, unless you're in Australia and then it's Boxing Day. So, uh, yeah, lots of things are closed. This donut, you know, we have to be somewhat fair about it. I had to get it yesterday. Oh, I've got a donut light today because I have an assistant today. Uh, so this is, uh, Sufganyot, uh, Lincolnberry Sufganyot, um, which I actually brought quite a few of t to the party last night and... No, most people didn't didn't do that. So, oh, today's pre-show ad was Chick Fil A. <laughs> I remember when I first got programmatic ads on my podcast, and they were like, "Okay, you can exclude like groups of types of ads. Like, you can turn off political ads if you want." Um, and I was like, "Can I not have Chick Fil A advertise on my podcast? Because I don't feel like it would be appropriate for my like queer friendly finance podcast." Um, and it was, it unfortunately, uh, it was uh, not possible to do that unless I excluded like all fast food ads. And I felt like that was like all restaurant ads. And I felt like that was too broad of a category. Um, but yeah, Fuzzbubble says, it says you joined in 2006, so 16th. Here's the thing. I went through the whole last year thinking that my, the 16th birthday of my channel was last year. So I've maybe I'm I think this is wrong. <laughs> um, but yes, so I don't know why in 2006 I, or 2005 um, I was hang on Christmas. I was making a YouTube account. I don't know. Uh, uh, Pixie Dust says, hi, happy Hanukkah. Uh, <laughs> I really should have gone to your thing yesterday. OK, but. DJ, what was it? What was it? Now I can't remember what you're the, oh, it was Babuchka, DJ Babuchka, uh, with like butch in the middle. Um, <laughs> that sounded really rad. It's too bad that it got canceled. Babuchka. Uh, so sweet 16, happy YouTube anniversary. Thank you all. This year I finally got monetized again. Cause it used to be that there wasn't a requirement that you have a thousand subscribers to get monetized. And so I was monetized, but I made like no money because I, um, I'm terrible at making videos as, uh, is evident. And, uh, oh my gosh, there's like a cat fight going on here. Uh, oh my God. I wish I could show you this in this cat, a cat cam of what's happening. Uh, this is, I mean, we've really got something going on here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have lighting back here, but someone is very... Someone has a lot of energy. A lot of she energy. She does not like that Aaron was in here and not paying attention to her during his stream. Look at that tail. Okay, I think you might have to go because this is it. That's an angry tale. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go sit on the couch for her. Uh, right there. <laughs> um, there you go. There's your cat cam, y'all. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so we're we are going to talk about budget resets today, um, and that's mostly because this is the time of year when everybody is setting New Year's resolutions, and I think uh, I think a lot of people don't think about the opportunity to both facilitate their New Year's resolutions with money and make money part of their New Year's resolutions. Um, I cannot accurately express how hilarious what is going on behind the camera is because Dora is literally following Aaron on the heels being like, you must go to the couch. Uh, we sh I should have given Aaron the cat cam camera so that we could have a couch cam. Oh yeah. Uh, and incidentally, I also, incidentally to budget reset, I just did my, um, 2023 projected budget. So every year I try to like project out my budget and I can kind of talk more about that process. A lot of it ends up being guesswork because it's it's hard to know what your life is going to look like a year out. If anything, any of us have learned in the past three years has been, uh, you know, plans will change uh, in the sight of global events. And I am, we're currently building a <laughs> house so which is one of those things where there are tons of things outside of our control um and timelines are constantly changing and flexible so like when it comes to even predicting my own housing expenses it's hard to know because we're building a multi-family and when we get occupancy permits to have other tenants move in influences what portion of the mortgage we're gonna pay and then also Aaron owns the house and I'm just gonna be in the house, so I'm probably not gonna pay like as high of a portion of the mortgage. And so, um, yeah, it's just hard to know, but I did my best at estimating those things. Uh, David says, thanks for sharing your hum humans with us. She is unhappy that I am also not on the couch as far as I can tell. <laughs> I'm getting a stare down from the doorway. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. How are you all doing in your part of the world? Is this a uh, holiday in your part of the world? Considering that my live stream time is uh, not conducive for folks in Asia, which is where most of the people in the world uh, that don't celebrate Christmas as a national holiday are, um, uh, I would I would love to know how how are you doing? What is what are you doing with it? It's today. Because it's a Sunday, a lot of a lot of countries are giving people tomorrow off, which in some countries ha also gives you Boxing Day, which is the 26th. So I'm kind of curious, are they going to give you Boxing Day and then also Tuesday? I almost always end up working on um, Christmas because I don't celebrate Christmas. So I think it's a good opportunity to like work and then have my coworkers not have to uh, work if they do celebrate, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, was easy this year and I don't work in a service job, so it's fine. Oh yeah. And a lot of people got their flights canceled because of the really, really crazy weather that we're having here in North America. So Michael says my flights, uh, to go to be with fam were canceled. So I'm here chilling with y'all. Ha ha. Thanks. <laughs> 61 Fahrenheit in North Las Vegas, bright, sunny Christmas. Wow, I thought Las Vegas got hit by all the, the cold storms as well. I, I was looking at like the map of the cold fronts moving and maybe it just missed Vegas because I, I saw it go down into Texas and I was like, oh, um, because it was like 16 in Texas, 16 um, Fahrenheit in Texas, which is uh, negative, I want to say negative four, negative four ish um, Celsius. Uh, don't quote me on my conversion right there. Um, Michael says even Florida got hit, which is just, wow. Ha ha. Yeah, I know the, uh, the thing that folks were saying, Aaron was talking about the other day was that in Texas, because they don't have to prepare for super cold weather. A lot of the water systems for, um, houses are up in the roof. So like hot water heaters will be there. And obviously roofs are not insulated. Um, generally, you generally don't insulate your roof unless you live somewhere very cold, which is why. So that's part of the reason that we're having so many water lines break. Uh, and so many people are having issues with their water in Texas. The journaling broom says it's 16 Fahrenheit here in Indiana, much warmer than the past two days. It's like full on, like up to 50 Fahrenheit here in Portland. I think it's like 50, but the problem is that it's 
there's still like huge amounts of slush snow on the ground. Um, okay, it's 42 Fahrenheit uh, here in Portland, which is like uh, around uh, 10 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's now it's balmy outside, but the one of the reasons we didn't want to go biking yesterday or today is that the it's we had freezing rain coming down, but all of the snow had kind of melted into this like gross slushy. And it was there was in some places like four to six inches that you would have to like step over of huge amounts of it on the sidewalk. And then there was also still ice yesterday because it was it was hovering above um freezing for like most of the day the day before it was when it actually fell it was kind of beautiful and the kind of snow we really rarely get here because it had been um in like the 20 degree fahrenheit range for a couple days so since it was significantly below freezing the ground was freezing and we didn't get rain before the snow which is what we normally get when we get snow and it makes the worst possible road conditions because you get like a layer of ice covered by a layer of snow and um we didn't have that so we actually went and walked around and like it was just like perfect walking snow i was like jumping on it and it was fine um and but we took the i decided to go to the rink because the <laughs> rink posted on friday like when all the snow fell that they were going to open at 10 a.m and i was like I'm going to go because most people are not going to go because the roads were just still completely covered. Um, and I was like, I can take the max, the light rail, just one stop and go. And I was like, it's going to be empty. It's normally really packed, like hundreds of people day skate during this time of year because it's in a mall. It's an ice skating rink in a mall. They have a giant tree in the middle of it. They make fake snow fall from the ceiling like three times a day. It's very picturesque and very cute, but it is not good for people who are trying to train. <laughs> but they said they were opening at 10 a.m. And uh, it's because the manager actually stayed at the hotel across the street the night before. Like he didn't even try to go home. Um, and so three employees came in and I managed to get the rink to myself for almost an hour by myself. Um, actually, I could play you. I could play you one of the clips of it if we want to. Um, if you want to see the clips. I posted these on social media. So, you know, if you <laughs> if you follow you, me, you might have already seen these, but. Uh, Let's see what I can pull it up. It's just a lot of pictures of my cat instead of. Okay, so. Oh, that's the me having the rink completely empty for myself. Uh, and then. Aaron came with me and we actually ended up not getting to take the light rail. Um because they were running a shuttle because a lot of the light rails were down, but we took the bus shuttle for the light rail. And I got it completely to myself. The mall was like eerily empty, even though it was like 10 a.m. right before. So um, Aaron, that isn't a drone, even though it looks like it's actually just filming from above because the ice rink has like three stories above it. Um, but then all of the shots that I took like on the ice, like, like these were actually from the 360 camera. So you can kind of see my hand holding the 360 camera um, on it. And it was, you know, I couldn't do anything like terribly complicated with the 360 camera, but I could do like some jumps and spins and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Michael says, whoa, this looks so cool. Uh, the 205 in Portland was still solid ice for most of yesterday. Zero out of 10 do not recommend. Yeah, riding on the, I don't really understand why the, the distance between like the stop I was going and the mall stop is only like a mile, but for some reason they had the shuttle um, being uh, the shut, the shuttle being put like on the, oh, I think we have a cat cam update. <laughs> this is what Dora is up to. <laughs> She's very tired. Uh, they sent it on the highway and the highway was not great and I did not like it. And I didn't know why they didn't send the Mac shuttle on surface streets because it's not like it needs to stop for intermediary stops. But the surface streets looked altogether safer than the highway did at that point. 
Um, this is great. I think we'll just, you just, this is a cat Yule log. <laughs> oh. How did she go from complete chaos to just passed out in like, like three minutes? Fuzzbubble says very cool videos. Pixie Dust says, I remember once as a child when there were snowflakes in the air in Miami. Uh, I can't, like, Miami is not at all equipped to handle snow, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> oh. Um, I'm already fading, you all. I'm already ready to be done. Is Dory getting her donut when you do? Dora already got her donut, um, but now she's just asleep. Oh, okay. The, the, the cat cam is gone. Um, <laughs> oh, the, the snow in, in Miami melted before it hit the ground, but I wanted a snow day. Well, I'm assuming it's probably something like, uh, in Portland where, um, there's a cat cam again. <laughs> we could try to get her donut out for her, but I don't, I don't think she's currently interested in a donut because it's not naps. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I think some of the snow actually stuck in Florida this time, though. Um, I don't know. Wild stuff. I, no, but a, a ton of people were not able to to go anywhere or have any holidays whatsoever. All right, should we talk about budget resets um, and some of the things that you can you can do to accomplish a budget reset? Or should we just eat a donut and then uh, <laughs> talk more about the weather? Because both of those are valid. We could really just have an entire thing of just cat cam. And that could be the entire stream is just cat cam. And we can just, we can put off talking about budgets till next week. Who needs financial content on my financial channel? Um, oh, I see that the cat cam has now, has come back in order. <laughs> is This seems like a lot of camera work for uh, the human that is holding the cat up. <laughs> this is better than my stream. Dora, do you have opinions about budgets? Nope. Just naps. Um, we could just eat the donut and be done. Okay, if I'm going to talk about budgets, I may have to give up the I pl the the player from the cat <laughs> on the Apple TV. <laughs> oh. Okay, so some things to think about when it comes to doing a money reset for the new year. Um, and this is like really the ideal time to talk about it because one, there's all this sort of like New Year's resolution energy in the air, but also this week usually doesn't end up costing people a lot of money. Like things got expensive and then you kind of have like a week to chill out <laughs> and think about how you want next year to be. Um, the, you know, there, there tends to be less demands on your time and energy this week if you are in uh, the Western part of the world. So, you know, one of the things you can do, we talked about trying out new budgeting apps um, last week. If you find that the method that you've been using isn't serving you anymore, like you're finding it too complicated, you're not keeping up with it, um, it's, you know, it's taking you too much time to, to actually do so then you're putting it off. Then, um, one of the things that you can do is try out a new budgeting method, a new budgeting app. So if you liked some of the, um, methods without apps that we talked about last week, like cash stuffing, then this is a really good time to give it a shot. And I always tell people when you try a new budgeting method to give it at least 40 days of um, a good go at it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. But the reason I say 40 days is 30 days is a really common frequency for a lot of bills. And you're going to want to get through at least a full month plus kind of the excess of a month before you're really going to, to have a concrete idea if it works for you. And if you feel like it's starting to work for you, then I usually say that it takes about three months of budgeting 
before you really start to get the get the rhythm because you know as the years and years of I have been teaching personal finance I you know when I teach these classes in person I will have people track their expenses on paper for a week before setting up a budget um, just to like get into the rhythm of it and every time I come back at the end of the week, people are like, oh, this week was so weird. I had all these strange expenses. This was just a totally atypical week. And everyone says that about their their budget, no matter what week it is. And uh, that's because that's how life is. There isn't, I think there's a lot of pressure people put on budget to mean that everything is extremely consistent each month, but that's just not how things work. Um, all of your expenses are gonna be a little lumpy. Like you're, you know, even utilities are a great example. Unless you're on equal billing, like, you know, right now you might be heating your house quite a lot and then you might not turn on your heat for a ton of months in the summer. So you might have a very different gas bill, right? Like there is a lumpiness to your expenses that you're, it takes a while to get used to. You're going to realize like, oh, I actually stock up on um, really expensive stuff at the beginning of the month for groceries. And then at the end of the month, I, I don't do a Costco run or something like that. Um, or you'll realize that you do have a Costco run that happens at the end of the month and that you need to make sure you have money still left in the budget for it. Uh, you'll start to remember those weird little fees that you'd forgotten about, like subscriptions that you didn't remember you had or school fees or something that you just kind of forgot that you were going to have to do. And usually I would say for a lot of people, it takes about three months. So consider trying a new budgeting method and give it at least a fair shot, in my opinion, of 40 days. And that doesn't mean you're perfect at it. That doesn't mean that it's it's going great, but it does mean that you'll have a general sense of if it is actually gonna work for your expenses. I still hate not knowing how much of my electric bill is charging me, uh, charging my EV. Those are still entirely separate budget categories in my head. Oh yeah, that is really frustrating because you're like, you don't have a good sense of, well, but you probably know what the baseline is of what it was before you got an EV until you started charging it, right? Graham says, my budgeting works on a retrospective basis, a bit like firing an arrow and declaring whatever it hit as being the target. I I mean, that makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. I, if you feel like you're kind of on autopilot with a lot of your finances and you feel comfortable about where you are with your finances, I don't think that it's important to be granular and track everything expenses. But if you feel like the retrospective or the in my head method of budgeting is not working for you, then now is a great time to set up a like a system that is a little better at doing things forward planning. So, you know, for example, there are parts of my budget that are retrospective in that I end up, um, you know, I wait till the end of the month to cut myself a paycheck and that's after I see all the, biz the expenses run through my business. Then once I see that, that will give me my net. That will tell me how much to put aside for both taxes and for my SEP IRA which is limited to 25% of my net. Um, and then, then I cut myself a paycheck and I cut that paycheck and I pay it to myself with the idea that I will use it on next month's expenses in my personal budget. But, you know, I am in a lot of ways, like there are expenses that I have to pay out of my business that um, I, I don't always know that I'm going to earn enough money from the business each month to cover those expenses. So, you know, I allocate I allocate them out for next month's expenses, but they inform how much I actually pay myself. Um, and I maintain two separate budgets because I pay myself from my business and I don't consider my business expenses part of my personal expenses um, because they also are on my schedule C. <laughs> um, but Minnie says, I've noticed my budget is typically the same, but I think it's because I'm single and I've been in my rent control for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. I mean, ha being in a rent control apartment makes it a lot easier to predict. Um, one of the things actually about my budget for 2023 is not knowing what month we're going to move means that it's hard to predict um, when my housing expenses are going to jump because we don't know when the house is going to be finished. But 
uh, the rent portion, we know that our current lease um, is up in May. And uh, that means that our rent will go up because we will then be switching to a month to month. But because there is a limit on how much um, now that we have rent control in the state of Oregon, we have rent growth restrictions. Because of that, that means that they cannot raise it more than 10% in a rolling um, 12 month period. And because we've been in the property for over a year and the property is less than um, less than a year old. So they can raise it, but if they do, they'd have to pay us um, relocation assistance, which would cost thousands of bucks. Um, essentially, it's to avoid people getting economically evicted, which is what happened to me prior to um, prior to us having any kind of rental control in the state of Oregon or any kind of renter assistance. So um, we at least at least I know how much it is going to jump in June if we don't get to move into the house yet. Um, Michael says, I moved from an apartment where I didn't pay per kilowatt hours to a house where I do. I don't have a baseline, but I can approximate, I guess, based on battery size. But that's a lot of math. Ha <laughs> ha. I mean, here's the thing. You only have to do the math like once, right? Right? Maybe? I don't know. I did miss Dora, though. Agony. Well, we can always come back here. Look, here's some more Dora for you. She's very, very tired. She's a very tired kitten. <laughs> oh, look how cute she is. Um, oh, back to sleep. Should I just like flip? There, there we go. Maybe we'll just like leave that live on the screen. Aaron's not having to hold that up with his hand, is he? <laughs> Can you tuck it in somewhere? <laughs> Aaron says, yes, he is having to hold it up with his hand. Well, I guess we won't force you to leave it on the screen then. <laughs> um, so trying out a new budgeting app, but that's not the only thing. So if you do, uh, if you're not someone who's into budgeting, but you want to get a little bit more proactive about how you treat various things, one of the things that you can do is set up better systems to pay yourself first. So if you have access to a uh, retirement account at work, like a 401k, a 529, um, a 403b, then what you can do is, not a 529, sorry. <laughs> I was just reading about the news about 529s now can convert to IRAs, but we'll talk about that a different week. Uh, 457, a 401k or a 403b. Um, if you have access to one of those at work, you can ratchet up your contributions if you are not already maxing them out, which is um, e even if you are maxing them out for this year, they reset um, to a new higher max next year, which I believe is going to be $21,500 for the 401k. Uh, 401k max 2023, I believe it's going up 1000 No, it's going to be $22,500. Um, so for most people, they are not going to have the opportunity to completely max it out, but you can up it by maybe 1% or 2%. You know, our inflation is taking a whack at everything in our budgets right now, but you might as well <laughs> increase what you are saving yourself because that one, that extra 1% you likely won't notice because it is pre-tax if you have a pre-tax retirement vehicle, but it will make a difference overall in the amount you're saving. Um, if you are, if retirement isn't your focus or you don't have access to retirement account at work, then one of the things you can do is think about how much you'd like to save next year for either an emergency fund or in some other kind of uh, taxed advantage retirement account not at work and just set up the auto transfer. Pay yourself now for it. So set up an auto transfer from either your checking to your savings account or from your uh, checking whatever your main account is into your Roth IRA perhaps or your traditional IRA and just make it automatic. If you are trying to save for kids' college education and it's been hard to prioritize, um, look at the different incentives for 529s that states have because quite a few states, I think it's 23 of them, have um, 
uh, incentives for saving in 529s. And there is a new tax treatment for 529s that just got announced this week, which I will talk about on another stream. Um, but look into it because there is a possibility that if you put as little as $25 a month away for um, your kids 529 or even your own, um, the state might match it or provide incentives for it. So actually do some due diligence on the um, 529 options for you. And that's kind of a way of being proactive about a money reset. Really think about what kind of goals that you have. So that's all kind of, I, in my opinion, the more dry stuff, the stuff that people think of when they think of New Year's solutions. Oh, this year I'm going to budget or, oh, you know, this year I'm going to save more. Um, uh, but I also really recommend that a money reset is a good time to think about the goals that you have for yourself in the new year and how you can use money to facilitate those goals. So, you know, one of my goals this year is I'd like for 2023 is that I would like to pass my gold level ice dance tests on in uh, figure skating. And that means I need coaching time. It means ice time. I need to pay for test fees. And so I sat down, I added up what those would look like. What does it, what is it going to cost to be able to get the amount of ice time that I need? What is it going to cost to be able to get the amount of coaching that I need? And then I broke that down and I added it to the budget and I made it a monthly goal for how much I put towards figure skating. Because what is the point of money if it doesn't help you facilitate the life that you want to lead? And so for me, it isn't just about flagellating myself around, oh, I spend too much on groceries or, oh, I'm not saving enough. It's also about finding ways to plan and facilitate the type of goals that I have because there are plenty of ways in which you can build things into the budget that facilitate goals for things that aren't even as explicit as mine. So, you know, maybe you want to um, pick back up the Spanish that you used to have, but you don't have a lot of opportunities. And you realize that if you budget um, and you allocate money towards a class to do conversational Spanish, you'll be able to um, start speaking it better. Um, and so you're going to like prioritize and set aside money and you're like, OK, it's like two hundred dollars to do a conversational Spanish class at the community college. And yes, I could do it for free, but I haven't been. So you say this is a thing. This is a goal that I want to get back. I don't want to lose my Spanish. So then what you do, you start saving for that two hundred and twenty dollar class or you just book it if you've got the money available. Um, it also could be something else that's like less explicit. Um, say that you wanted to start volunteering in the new year, but like the place where you want to volunteer is like way out in the suburbs and it's like hard for you to make yourself get to. But there is a cute coffee shop near the place you want to volunteer. Um, you could budget a line item that is for that coffee. <laughs> Um, each each week and you're like, okay, I want to get out there and I want to volunteer every Sunday morning. And uh, that means I'm going to put $6 for a nice coffee from the coffee shop in there in order to give myself a positive feedback loop towards that goal. Like think from a perspective of not just I'm spending all of the money, but what are the real things that I want to focus on? What are the core values I want to focus on? And how can I use money to facilitate those? And that also gives you a better idea of if you're someone that has a variable income or, you know, has a side hustle, whatever, it gives you a better idea of how much you need to work or earn money in order to facilitate those goals. Maybe, for example, you have a job that actually does pay quite well, but you have to work a lot in order to get the overtime, but you realize that your biggest goal is going to be getting rid of your debt. Um, so what you do is you're also budgeting for the types of things that you need to facilitate working a lot of overtime so that you can pay off your debt. Maybe that is paying for a cleaner for your house. Maybe it is, you know, recognizing um, that you are going to eat takeout more often if you're working at the office really late. Um, maybe it's budgeting for some extra Ubers, 
home from the office because that's the only way that you're going to be able to work the amount of hours that you need to pay off your debt. As long as you you make sure to balance and that working those extra hours to pay off your debt isn't all being spent on convenience items to work those hours, um, you know, you've always got to make sure like if you're working an extra job to help pay off your debt, but then you're spending all the money uh, you have from that job because you're so stressed out working two jobs, then is it really worth it? Um, you know, there's uh, like just thinking through the things in your life that are non-monetary goals and how money can help you accomplish those. Um, you know, the there's another part generally of of financial readiness and a money reset, which is think about the things that you don't want to happen again. So, you know, when you're thinking about like like setting up your house, you're always encouraged by to like walk through your house and think of the parts of your life that um, cause you stress. Like, oh, I don't have a key hook here, so my keys always fall on the floor and I can't find them. Or, oh, this coffee maker uh, is like always burbling off the side and uh, it annoys me in the morning. So I end up going out and buying coffee. Think about your financial life in the same way. Are there places in your financial life where you're always the same kind of stressed out? Are you always finding that you're really stressed because it's, um, you know, you end up going out to a dinner with uh, colleagues at work and way overspending on food you don't even like? Or are is are you always feeling like you're kind of running out at the end of the month and you don't understand why you're running out because you make good money? Um, maybe that right now you're feeling like you spend a lot in holiday gifts every year and every year it's this crunch because you end up uh, not setting aside money for it and then all of a sudden Christmas just really wipes you out. Um, so one of the things you can do is find those financial surprises, those unpleasant surprises, and figure out ways to budget around them. Stop being surprised by things that you know are going to happen. Like, you know that the holidays are going to come every year and that you're going to spend money on gifts. So plan ahead for it. You know, spending $600 on gifts is a huge whack to most people's budget. But if you can afford that, you probably will feel it even less to put $500 aside each month um, so that you're better prepared and it's less stressful for you. Um, you know, maybe it is the idea that you're always really stressed about grocery expenses towards the end of the month and the way that you can kind of offset that is by meal planning so that you've got a better idea about how to allocate it instead of eating like a king on the first of the month and eating like a pauper on the 30th. Um, you know, the... The other thing is look around at things that might be big expensive replacements in the next year or two years or three years. Is your roof nearing the end of its life? Do you need to start saving towards buying a roof um, and getting it replaced? Is your laptop on its last legs? Do you need to start saving to be able to replace your laptop so that when it kicks the bucket, you actually have money and you don't have to finance it? Um, you know, is there like, are there your really nice winter boots are going to need to be resold? Like really thinking through what the surprises are that might throw you into chaos and creating a plan that, um, creating a plan for how you are going to strategize for that instead of being, uh, the kind of person that everything is a financial emergency because you keep being surprised by things you could have probably predicted. Minnie says, computer replacements, people forget they need to be replaced. I know, it happens all the time. I'm actually, this computer I'm a little worried <laughs> should be on its last legs, and I thought I was going to have to replace it last year, but it's still kicking, so. Um... My income supplements with the disability benefits, so, so I think more than one factor keeps my spending boring and the same month to month. I'm what I'm curious about are are your groceries the same month to month? Because for me, those are the like the area that is like totally different month to month, um, and unfortunately, can continually going up and up and up these days. Um, and then. Kind of the last thing I'm going to say before we dive um, into what we can kind of look at my 2023 budget and I can walk you through it if that's interesting and we can try the donut. Um, 
But I always recommend that people do a check-in, and I think January is a good time to do this, or sometime between January and when they file their taxes, if they're in the U.S. with the same tax deadlines, um, is take stock of your financial self. So especially if you're not someone who is actively budgeting every month, at least get a check-in about where you are. What is your net worth? Add together all of your assets subtract all of your debt, which means that you might have to log in to your student loan provider's website, figure out what your student loans are. It means you need to actually figure out like what you still owe on your house if you own your home. Really add that all together and get a good sense of your net worth. Don't stress too much about it. Markets are down for a lot of people. Your net worth might be lower this, than it year was last year. Um, times are tough for a lot of people. But getting a check-in can give you a sense of progress. Um, I also recommend doing that with your credit score. If you're not someone who regularly monitors your credit score, at least do it once a year. Um, you can get your credit report right now every single month for free from annualcreditreport.com. Um, generally, it's uh, you can get it once a year, but it's every month right now for uh, because of the pandemic from each three of the bureaus. And that's a good opportunity to actually get, you know, one, make sure that you haven't been the victim of identity theft, that the information is accurate and give you a sense of kind of where you at are at with credit scores. And credit scores are not generally important unless you are trying to borrow more money, but they are a good tool to have in your back pocket. Um, and so kind of doing a financial analysis of where you're at. Um, Geograph Concept says, I usually set aside money for a new phone soon, I hope, and some money for a new iPad. I think I permanently lost my AirPods and I will need to replace those. Ooh, AirPods are expensive. I wish that AirPods worked for me, but they won't stay in my ear, so... Uh, Anonymous says, getting together reoccurring expenses is so overwhelming. I'm switching from a passion planner to personal rings again to uh, stay on top of expenses, lol. Does the passion planner have like an expenses section on it? Um, yeah, getting together those reoccurring expenses can be really overwhelming. Um, thinking about both the things that are like monthly subscriptions or monthly bills, but then also thinking about those kinds of things that are like more long range, but recurring, like, uh, like, you know, Christmas expenses and things like that. Um, groceries is the same, but I cook the same things every week. So it's a few dollars up and down on groceries. Chicken soup is lunch and dinner. I don't cook. Uh, I don't cook something different for lunch as dinner. Interesting. Left leftovers is breakfast. That helps a lot too. Yeah. I eat the same thing for breakfast every day. Three tacos every day. Um, last time I added together the cost of tacos, they were, um, they were 22 cents a taco, but I think they might've gone up because that was quite a few years ago. Um, Anonymous says, no, it doesn't, but they have an insert on their site to track expenses and budget, but you have to tape it into the planner if that makes sense. Oh yeah. I know they have a lot of, um, different, uh, different things on their um, website. You could also print the expenses and then put it into your um, personal rings if you wanted. Like you don't have to use the planner just to use their inserts, right? Uh, especially because you had a ring planner before. Um, but I, I liked the passion planner before. I didn't, I don't, well, I wasn't a huge fan of how they were running their business for a while, but um, yeah. Uh, here, so I will show you all my, um, my so every year I essentially look at my personal budget. So I do my, you know, reports every single month about how much I've spent. And then I will predict what I think my budget is for the next year. So this is what I ended up spending thus far this year. I am I'm going to do my best to try to keep this. Um, oh, no. There we go. What happened? There we go. Um, I'm going to do my best to try to um, keep this, uh, keep keep it under 18,000 for the year just because we're so close to the end of the year. Um, but I do think that last 146, this is, I'm using this, uh, 148, I'm, I'm using this as motivation to not um, get any dresses, even though lots of websites are having significant end of year sales. But 
now that I see how close it is, I want to keep it under 18,000. Um, so this is what my 2022 uh, spending is. Uh, hopefully <laughs> groceries don't put it over 18,000, which is entirely possible given how much they've been going up. Um, my budget was quite a lot higher for this year. So my budget was, I believe, 22,000 for the year. However, that included a um, trip that I ended up not doing, a Guinness World Record um, attempt trip. So because I did not do that this year, that knocked about $3,000 off the estimated expenses. Um, and then this is what I am project predicting for the 2023 budget. So there will be a post up on my website very soon um, that kind of walks through all of, of this. Here's the thing. This budget was very hard to do because, like I said, we are building a house. So the housing is like, it's my rent for half the year, but then me trying to estimate what my portion of the mortgage is going to be um, next uh, for the second half of the year, not knowing what month we're actually going to move in. Um, I also budgeted for moving expenses. We are hoping to do a bike move. So that will be like food and things for um, food. And then all of those kind of weird flotsam that you buy when you move into a new place, like hooks and stuff like that. Um, and then I budgeted a thousand dollars on home decor, which is like pretty high, but I think we're going to end up needing to get, um, some new furniture for my office and stuff like that. So I put a thousand, it might end up being way over that. We'll really find out. Um, it's certainly more than I've spent any time in recent years, but, um, and, uh, restaurants is pretty close to what I spent this year, you know, just under 30. And then, the travel is going to Japan at the end of March. I'm actually not doing a ton of travel um, this next year, at least currently planned, because the gay games in Hong Kong in November 2023, which is what I was planning on doing, um, ended up taking figure skating out of the running. So there's not really a good reason for me to go um, because I wouldn't be able to compete in figure skating. Um, and the Japan trip... The flight is already booked on points for me, and most of the nights that we were there, the hotel is actually um, covered by Aaron's work because Aaron is going to be there for for work. So there's only a couple nights that we're hopefully going to be able to mostly do on hotel points. So most of that, that's actually a pretty high estimate of spending because it doesn't include lodging or flights. Um, and then there's another possibility that I might um, fly down on points down to San Francisco, um, well, San Jose, uh, late next month. Other than that, I'm, I'm trying to be chill about <laughs> my travel plans, um, next year because there is so much, um, there's just so much up in the air here in Portland. So I don't want to plan for a lot of travel. Minnie says buying cleaning products from the dollar store, their website sells items in a case. So there are ways of cutting or buying in bulk instead of everything monthly. Nice. Um, yeah, the dollar store, some of their cleaning products are really dope. Uh, some of them are like, I'm not a huge fan of, but um, I like a lot of their cleaning products. Minnie is a master. Um, the physicist in me notices that your budget has five significant figures. Can you comment on precision and budgeting and how useful it is? Well, so I will say that this is one of the reasons that it is so precise altogether is simply because it's informed by past data. Um, this is not going to end up being how what my budget is, right? This is to give me a general idea so that I'm not surprised. I use the annual budget setting as an opportunity to kind of look forward think about the travel plans that I have, kind of estimate out how much I think I'm going to be spending on various things and use past data to inform it. Um, you know, I one thing that I do, which I don't necessarily recommend everybody does, is that every single month I track what percentage of the way I am through the year and what percentage of the um, uh, of my annual budget amount that I am through the year. I came in way under budget this year by like more than 20% because I um, didn't take that trip that was included in the annual budget amount. 
I think it's it's useful, but I think of it more in terms of the monthly breakdown because I have a lot of those kind of sinking funds for those unexpected expenses. And it gives me a good idea about um, travel budgets and stuff like that. But yeah, I wouldn't say that the beginner should sweat it. And I would also say that um, it's I think it's useful for a high level view, but I wouldn't sweat about the individual ones. Like, I'm not going to be upset if I end up spending, uh, you know, two thousand five hundred and eighty dollars on groceries or even two thousand or and eight hundred dollars on groceries because groceries have been going up so much. Um, but it gives me a good idea of where things might have to shift and where I have opportunities to really uh, like change things as unexpected expenses come up. Uh, so yeah, those are my two. I am, my voice is getting really dry. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's do the donut y'all. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've been given a donut light. So this is a jelly donut, a soufganyo, uh, Israeli jelly donut, and it has lingonberry on the inside. Um, I will say this is a day old because thank you, Aaron, for coming and bringing the donut light. It is a day old because, uh, the donut shop was closed today for Christmas. So I had to get it a day before. Geograph Concept says, I love Lincolnberry. Well, you would love Finland then. Lincolnberry slushies at Ikea are the bee's knees. I guess that means Sweden likes Lincolnberry too. I haven't gotten to Lincolnberry yet. Right now it's just like a regular donut. I will say it was better fresh. I may have already had one fresh. This this was powdered sugar, but it's kind of like hardened on the top. The jelly on the inside is ace. I see that it is Christmas slash the last day of Hanukkah and the mimosas have begun at 12 p.m. Pixie Dust <laughs> started writing something and then said, thanks, Mr. Bowtie. I think that's because your cat uh, put that on the screen. I will say that um, that nonsense actually got uh, held for review by the, <laughs> the moderation robots. John says, it's the only vegan donut I've ever had that tasted like it was made with dairy. It was delicious, including the jam. Yeah, I almost wonder if I could have warmed this one up. It's good. The, the jelly is like pretty excellently tart. And it's nice and fluffy. I wouldn't say that it's best a day later. I think it would have been better fresh. Asexual Jelly is a good band name. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. It's good, but it's not amazing. I think it was not even fresh. I don't think it was a 4 out of 5, but it was quite good. And, you know, nice and seasonally appropriate. Um... Hey, how about people tell me what they're doing for the rest of the day on uh, the holiday celebrated the, the world around for uh, a lot of people or in Christian majority countries. Erin says, I'm done with my live stream, so it's mimosa o'clock. I need to get work done after this, which I'm really not looking forward to. I'm actually considering filming a plan with me video because I have... Uh, 
tomorrow starts the first day in my new planner. Um, so I was thinking about doing a plan with me video, not like a live stream, but an actual plan with me because I need to fill this in. And but I'm also wondering if I'm overthinking it and I should just use the planner like a planner and I should not try to turn it into content. Um, uh, Pixie does says, I'm not going to do the bike ride. So nothing. Want an assistant? Uh, unfortunately, almost all the stuff I have to do is writing, so I don't know how much an assistant will really help me. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome to just come an angry life cheerleader me um, into doing my work. Uh, but unfortunately, I think most of my work is not very assistant friendly. Uh, Minnie says, I did a live stream on my channel. I now have to edit the part I don't want on it. I, <laughs> I logged in a site while sharing my screen. Oh, damn. Well, you can do that inside the YouTube, um, app. You can like either blur it out or just cut it out. Um, uh, anonymous says, figure out finances. I quit my job for mental health. The Cobra payments are killing me. Um, you know, you don't have to stay enrolled in Cobra. Um, the, uh, one, I wish you much luck at figuring out your finances. Uh, and I hope your mental health is doing better now that you quit your job. The um, So you don't have to stay with Cobra. And if you don't have income right now, then you're most likely going to get a much better deal on subsidies. And one of the main reasons to keep the Cobra up would be is if you've already hit your deductible or your out-of-pocket maximum. Um, but you're, since most people's reset on December 31st, um, you do have a good opportunity to um, uh, enroll in the healthcare plan. And open enrollment is over already on healthcare.gov or whatever your state exchange is, but you don't actually need to do open enrollment if you lose your coverage otherwise. And if you choose to discontinue your coverage um, on COBRA, that means you can enroll and you'll qualify for subsidies. So um, as long as your income is over... Um, or is under 400% of the AGI, which for a single person, or, or your AGI is over 400% of the federal poverty level, which is around $60,000 for a single person, um, would be 400%, uh, then you qualify for sig significant subsidies on the exchange, and it usually makes a lot more sense than doing COBRA. Um, the only reason really to continue COBRA would be if is if you had already met your deductible or your out-of-pocket maximum. Um, and uh, it's essentially a relic of the old system where there was no access to healthcare through the healthcare exchange. Um, I guess one of the other reasons to do it would be if you have no income right now and your state does not have the Medicaid expansion, so your income is too low to get any of the plans on um, the like on the exchange. But yeah, I would log in and use the opportunity to get um, uh, a plan on healthcare.gov. We did a couple live streams. Um, if you were part of them, uh, you can also go back and watch them about how to na navigate the healthcare exchange. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always ask on the Oh My Dollar forums or at questions at ohmydollar.com. And I will do my best to answer. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, if you get rid of those COBRA payments and you get subsidized premiums, you're going to find very quickly that um, it g gives you a lot more time to wait before you find another job um, because those COBRA payments, I mean, it depends on the plan that you had at work, but for COBRA, you're paying a 3% administrative fee and then you're paying both what you were paying before and what your employer was paying before. So if your employer was covering a huge chunk of your health insurance, it's going to be way higher. Um, Anonymous says, oh, thank you. I'll check the video out. Yeah, I also have a lot of um, podcasts on healthcare.gov, um, but the podcast is not up to date for this year. And a lot of things got fixed, um, like the family glitch got fixed and stuff like that um, this year for uh, healthcare.gov. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully it will help you figure that out. Pixie Dust says, I also need motivation to write myself. Well, I don't, I don't know what we can do other than maybe we can have a Zoom call and we both just sit there silently trying to make ourselves do uh, videos. Oh, I have to wait for the video to be processed to make the edit. Yeah. That is one of the struggles of waiting for YouTube to decide that it's done with stuff. Anybody have any questions? Hopefully you're having a nice, um, cozy Christmas. It sounds like everybody's trying to be productive, which is probably why you've 
uh, stumbled into this stream when this is a day when a lot of people celebrate a holiday. Uh, and, you know, if you celebrate, uh, I hope you have a lovely last night of Hanukkah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's dark and cold in a lot of North America, so it is a great time for Hanukkah. <laughs> ah, this is way better than family Christmas. They got mad at me and I said, no, I won't attend. Way to set boundaries. I'm I'm all on board. Um, well, I'm glad that. Um, happy video birthday. Uh, my channel says thank you for uh its birthday celebration. Very exciting. <laughs> oh. Um, I am fading though, so I think I might actually go. Um, there is a possibility we are going to be doing a New Year's live stream next Saturday on New Year's Eve. It'll be a joint live stream with me and Aaron, and we are going to um, invite a couple guests from different time zones on. If you're interested in being one of those guests, let me know. Um, and it will start at um, 2 p.m. Pacific time, which will be 11 p.m. Uh, Brussels time, so European time, so essentially an hour before midnight uh, in a bunch of different time zones, and we're just gonna like chill and hang out and have a nice chill, dress up fancy, going nowhere, New Year's Eve uh, party, and then we're probably gonna wrap slightly after um, Eastern Standard Time um, midnight because we are old and we're not gonna stay up till midnight Pacific time. Minnie would love to be a guest. All right, we have Minnie as, uh, I think, Eastern Standard Time uh, guest. <laughs> Great. Yes. Yay. <laughs> um, there we go. We've we've narrowed it down. I have a feeling there might be um, some mimosas and naps happening uh, on the couch right now. I'm very curious to, to know what is going on on the kitten cam right now. <laughs> It's gotten suspiciously quiet in the other room, which leads me to believe that the cat has lured Aaron into a nap. Um, oh, oh, at least one person is really tired in the other room. Is she trying to talk you into a nap, Aaron? Oh, a side kitten. Oh, I see the laptop in there, too. Minnie is part of our family now. Yay. <laughs> um, we would we would love to have you on as a guest, Minnie. Um, we I will I'll follow up with you. I know how to get a hold of you. All right, y'all. Have a lovely and safe rest of uh your Sunday or your Monday morning, wherever you are in the world. Um and uh, you know, stay safe. Set boundaries if you need to with family, because this is the time of year to, for setting boundaries. Uh, stay safe and uh, pet a cat if you have one available. Stay hydrated. And I will see you all possibly New Year's Eve and possibly Minnie will be joining as well. So uh, see you then and otherwise stream next uh, next week. It is the first stream of 2023 on the first day of 2023 same time same place on this channel uh on january 1st so i think dora's gonna take us out bye